Almost. Uh, I'm going to call it plus seven. Just let John sort it out. While he's sorting his table out, before we start meeting the proper, uh, I would like to, on behalf of the council, thank all the members of the government that have helped clear the trees and debris at the school. Uh, I think it's very honour to live in the village where you have so many people that are kindly of to help and do well and pull together in times of need. So, um, on behalf of the council, we'll be sending loads of thanks out by the minutes to. Yeah. Can I ask you've got a spare pen that can have tonight on the feet? Oh, thank you. Unless I need it. Mine's at the end. Right then, so we'll start with uh, item one on the agenda. Uh, apologies for absence. Okay, I'll give you a spare. Yes, Rick Lane. Rick Lane. Oh, me too, too. Um, do you want to do anything for the contracts, Tony, or are you happy? Did that place interest? Do you want to declare the contracts? Well, you, you, you can call me what you said, that's something we need, right? So. Okay. Um, item three uh, public participation. Members of the public may ask questions and make representations related to items on the agenda in the course of standard orders for D to J. Nothing for no other members of the public. Thank you very much. Item 4A, to prove as correct that the minutes of the meeting held on the 4th of October, these are the ones where we've hopefully now got it right, a verbatim um, statement from the resident. The resident speaks for yes. Have you got another copy of the agenda? Uh, yeah, I have all the other ones. Um, so with that debate statement, is everybody happy? Does anybody have any problems with the um, minutes from the 4th of October? So a show of hands to pass those from the 4th of October, please. Thank you very much. Item 4B, to approve as correct the minutes of the meeting of the council held on the 1st of November. Does anybody have any points you'd like to raise on those minutes? In that case, I have a show of hands to prove those minutes is correct. Thank you very much. Yeah. Also, um, could I make a brief comment in the wake of the minutes, which don't relate to the minutes, but relate to the subject matter that was covered? Mm -hmm. um, I found the correspondence that went on, most of which was on Gmail, uh, after the last meeting, disturbing, to say the least. I think people traded insults rather too liberally and called each other all sorts of things and I, I was shocked having uh, felt that the council was really quite nice and polite to one another. So I, if that was in the public eye I think we would be in serious trouble and I would just ask personally that uh, we sort of keep the temperature down and you know, we can criticise one another, we can make points but we don't need to do as it that sort of language, in my view. And I apologise if I if I insulted anybody or upset them by what I said. One of those where if you write an email that you think they pretentious maybe sit on it overnight and you read it the next morning. <laughs> I think we've all been guilty of that. That's thank you very much. Um, right. Item 5A, finances, to receive the financial statements and budget monitoring documents, which are at both pages number 14, and it's cited from my printer. Does anybody have any points or questions you'd like to bring up on those? Yes.
approved to authorise those payments. Thank you very much. Um, item six and seven, just I think for members of the public, this was a, a difficult one which we discussed. Um, we, we obviously put out to tender the grass cuts and the landscaping. Some of those did come back as close to confidence. Um, and I went on to say, should we be making these public? And the, the consensus of opinion from other councils is no, because they, what we want is they want people to have faith that they can submit a bid to secure that it is going to be in confidence. In front of you. And you more like to get more people bidding. We were very pleased with the number of people that did actually respond to our tender. Uh, and we feel that if we did make it all public, that people might be reluctant to bid next time. Um, and so we did keep it effectively commercially in confidence, which I, I, I know several of the councils have done. Um, so that's just explaining why on this, I do not want to discuss details of the bids public. We will make the winning bids public, but what we won't do is publicise the other ones. Um, so, for obvious reasons, for that commercial confidence reasons, so we do get them to bid in the future. Um, so with that in mind, 6A was to receive the summary and scoring tenders from the Kirk work, contract working group, which hopefully you've all seen those. Does anybody have any points on the scoring and the tenders themselves? In that case, 6B, to agree the award of the contract uh, as uh, issued by the contract working group. So 6B. So this is for the grass cutting. Can I have a show of hands all those in favour of awarding that contract? Thank you very much. That was passed. 7A, the contracts for landscaping to receive the summary of the score of tenders for the working group. Again, you've all seen that. Did anybody have any points or comments they'd like to make on that? Uh, on 7B, to agree the award of the contract which is recommended by the contract working group. All those in favour? Thank you very much. Uh, 8A, Felton Surgery. Uh, just so people are aware, Claire saw, because I've copied her in, I emailed uh, Healthcare Northumberland. Um, thank you, members of the committee, for nudging me up, reminding me. I wrote to Healthcare Northumberland uh, about what is happening because I basically said to them, the last we heard was an email from Ashura saying they'd been told by the doctors to put it on hold. Healthcare Northumberland, for those that they were the ones that organised the online seminar, so they were the ones trying to promote it and push it forward and get everybody working together. So I wrote to them asking them what was happening. I said I was particularly disturbed because we keep getting reports back to the council from people who go to the surgery, speak to the nurses, and the nurses keep reporting back that it's the council holding things up. Well, clearly it's not, and I want to get that across. Um, Healthcare Northumberland said they can't help, they don't know themselves, but they have passed it on to the CCG. They've spoken to and passed it on to the CCG. I'm still awaiting to hear from the CCG. Well, I think, personally, Chair, you should be writing directly to the CCG. Well, we have effectively, this has gone on to. No, 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 no. We write directly. Okay. Can I interrupt there? There was a PPG meeting that we did a corporate value tender along with others, and um, the doctor said that she hasn't withdrawn. It was a surer who said they wanted to put it on board, which we dis only disagreed with, but she wouldn't have it. And anyway, she said we should be negotiating with the surer, so perhaps we need to write to a surer also to find out what is going on. We had some business to have. We did write to them and haven't heard, but we can do it again. Yes. Can I just back up what came on in the minutes from the PPG meeting? It said that Dr. Lee's clarifying the developer, Shura, has been asked for the purchase of materials on board, whilst the contractual and procedural process is catched up. Dr. Lee's further confirmed that planning for a new health surgery was continuing and that she was not involved in any land issues between the parish council and the development. Okay. Well, Chair, in view of what the council Dixon just said there, they haven't applied for planning permission yet. No. So how do they know what materials they want? Well, 
My comment was, we are not just building Felton surgery, we are building all over the country, and they will have, no doubt, adequate supplies, adequate surplies, regardless of anything. So I thought that was just a red herring thrown at us as well. So I think, as I see, I know it's worked up there, but we need to contact the insurer, the CCG, what I can do, because they can call the doctors. I'll email that, or I'll make sure CCG have been copied into that. Yeah. Rather than just taking their word for it. I'll well, it's just, you know, still good to have a copy if you have a direct communication. Yes. Oh, that's what I'm saying. So I'll put that on me, I'll email the CCG. Dr. Lister did also say that. Um, a malignant sure two not. surgeries and making this a satellite one is taking far, far longer and is much more strenuous than they ever, ever thought would happen. So, because you put a lot more eyes and cross a lot more teeth. Well, she said, was that like? well, she said it was because they usually deal with very large surgeries, one perhaps in the south and one perhaps in the north, who are going through the same process. And a small surgery like ours and um, theirs um, they still have to take all the dogs and jump through all the rooms. Uh, on to... Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, the Parish Council have a solicitor who was dealing with um, various elements of the land. Is it not a better plan to have one letter to all parties from the solicitor? asking the same questions to, to actually try and bring things together to a meeting. Otherwise, if it's, this has just gone round in circles. It's just something else to consider. Thank you very much. Thoughts on the question, Council? Yeah. No, I'll talk. Yeah. You have to do that and then copy my letter to the sister. Thank you very much. It's how it changed up the woman. So on to 8A then, to agree a transfer document to transfer a surgery. Now what my personal feeling, and I'll put this out, is that what we're trying to do here, Claire and I have discussed this, is we want to agree to the terms of the transfer, but we don't want to start the transfer yet until we know for definite that it's going ahead. Because we don't want to commit to more fees and taking over land that we have no use for if they Well, we aren't committing to more fees, Chair, because there we are picking up all the fees, the other is insurance. No, I'm on about future fees. So if we take over the land, we've then got the fees to maintain that land. So well, we're, we're, we're committing ourselves to take over that land, and then we're responsible for the upkeep of it. Um, yes, yeah, so no, but we don't want to need what to have it, so it can be complete. So, so what the idea that's is, what so that's why we agree now that the terms are all correct, that we're happy with the terms that have been laid out. So as soon as the story is saying to go again, we say, yes, the sister, Go ahead with that. In other words, you just go to advise the solicitor of such. Yes, provided we're all happy with that. John, sorry, you were going to. I sort of understand why you want that to happen, but I kind of I, I disagree. I think it, it should go through as quick as possible. Okay. Because actually, the cost of managing that area you know, is far outweighed by the potential of losing it to somebody else or something else. And bear in mind that was almost recompense for losing land elsewhere. I think it needs to. We, we can't lose the trains and else if the, the deeds are, it has to be a surgery built in there, so we can't use it to... I can't agree with John. Okay. We should, we should go ahead. Yeah. Not just losing it. There is a potential, there is a potential that way. That way could take it back. So the thoughts of the rest of the council? Because, is it too yeah. So the um, proposal to take it. So the proposal is to agree the transfer yeah. and to take it as soon as well. Yeah. So first of all, let's um, the transfer document was sent out. Has everybody had a chance to, to read that? Has there been any questions on that? That does include the footpath. They will not split the land up. Yeah. But what I'm hoping is that we can, when uh, Northumberland County Council take over um, or adopt all the lanes, we can just have them adopt that footpath as well. Is, is that you should know Past experience, you know, if that's possible. I, I, I would not see one. Yeah. If they take no over. I mean, the thing is, you've got to discuss this with the footpaths officer, going to his option. 
not supposed to be really, really keep to it. I mean, it's such a small section of footpath anyway, and it's, it's not over, you know, it's not through a wood or anything no. like the over it, so even if we ended up looking after that. So my my concern is we're going to, again, lose the land just for that one little bit. Yeah. We'll lose the, you know, if we do. The only comment I would add, um, why haven't we got an up-to-date plan with the document? It's also said there was one in included with the plan, if you read on it. Did you not send that one through, did you not that one that sent through separately came with, from the same email, did not come from the same email? Well, Claire, you sent the document out to us, yeah. but there was no copy of the plan with it. No. That's what things you said. But I think that the one that came out that I sent around, which was the... Um, uh, this one. I think that was the one that did that not come from Mr. That one's not on the team. We see the way. I've had to send that to you all. Well, it's not anything, so that's. I did a hunt. I'm thinking I might have missed it. The, the one I got. The one that was on my email. The one that was on my email. The one that Anne produced, which is a copy from from land registry. The one you were yeah. 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 This is the one that was sent around. Um, sorry, this is the latest so, one that so I got. Will you resend that? Uh, yeah, please. Mr. Chairman, does that plan, the site plan, does that. Um, Include the eastern boundary where the red line drawing actually is years away slightly from the um, boundary. Or does it include? Let's have a look. And also, I think it's so, yes. so that, that, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. drawing still shows that the bound, the red line is um, not following the line of the uh, existing fence line, which means that there's potentially a strip of land which does not then belong to the parish council. Right. So it's in, incumbent on the parish council to make sure that that land that is being purchased for the doctor's surgery abuts the land to the east, which is either Parish Council or NCC land, there must be no gap, there must, it must all be uh, a joined up element to that. And secondly, the east to the west. Uh, yeah, sorry to, sorry, to the west, yes. Yeah. Uh, sorry, apologies, yes. Yeah. And oh, yes. Yeah, there is another point here. I'm pretty sure the fence follows that line up there. So the, the red line is beyond the fence. Is beyond the fence line to stay now. It we, does. We, so we that's correct. Stop. This one going down that way. No, 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 no,
there's, a, there's about a three metre strip of land which belongs to Belby where they planted the shrubs. So the red line drawing that is on there is correct. It continues that line all the way along. It is incumbent on the parish council to get that land because if and when that doctor's surgery is built, it needs that land behind it, otherwise the property would have to come forward because it would need so much land behind it. It won't be allowed to build to the boundary. Whereas if it's if you've got that extra bit of land, well not extra, it is the land. If, if you take that away, the, the, the property has to come forward. So it is correct and it has always been the red line drawing, which includes a three metre strip beyond the fence line of the existing Bellway properties. Sorry, Chair, it's not a three metre, it's a three metre strip, I agree, which is a three metre strip which is owned by three different foot people. Not where the transfer is, that's the problem. It's not very different parts. Keith Pattinson, Victor Thompson, and Bellway. Yeah, I know that. We're not talking about a different part of the site then. Well, if they said to go right up to the uh, road jump. I think, Chair, you need a site meeting in some way from Bellevue. Yeah, I'll just say that we still have I don't mean to say, we, we, we had a meeting with, so, what they call it, with Kai or a... So what yeah, we need to do is sub subject to a site meeting and agree the actual land. Are the rest of the terms acceptable? <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, have I had this with the plan? Yes, yeah. even that. So, what we, we do need that site meeting and then say we're, we're happy with the rest of it, subject to the site meeting. And that, that is a necessity. And, and Mr. Chairman, I, I, I totally, this business about the public footpath, Bellways Development Corporation, they bought the entire land which had a public footpath right its way through it. It is their responsibility. They purchased it knowing it was going to be there. And I don't see why the NCC or the parish council should be um, have a, an extra uh, cost onto their um, balance sheet. It's down to them. Right. And, and yeah. I think that's definitely something should be brought up if you're having that meeting. If I have this need, this has got to be brought up, I quite agree. Because the public footpath goes down there, around there, around there, around there, which is in the comes to the land, then all of a sudden they change. No. Definitely. Because it's not just that bit, it's right from here, isn't it? Yes, this is this is this is the, the diverted footpath which goes across there. Behind this building here. So before we need the site meeting. Yes. What's that split between the boundary there and the red line here? That's what Fiona's mentioning. So that's that's the thing. Because that bit's highways, yeah. To that boundary there, which is obviously the boundary of the site. So why are they giving us Well this is one of the things we've asked them to tell us about they just yeah. So that we need to go back on the plan. But this is very different from the land registry one when the initial uh, very different to us. Yeah, because I think you keep trying to do it. No, I think it's just a good example. Yes. I mean, if we bought the land, we'd buy the hedgerow as well. I know that hedgerow could be the responsibility of the county council once that road was on there. Because that's where the A1 used to come down there into the village. So they, they do own that thing. Right? So we need to be clear where the boundary is going. Really. Yeah. yeah. If we were to look at the land registry now, would they show us the highways, NCC ownership of the land? Possibly, yes. I've got an email address that I can speak to in the county council. Well, no, there is somebody in county council. Can't remember his name now. The lad who used to do it uh, has passed on now for that. So uh, I can't help. But. Uh, no, it's uh, all my to tell you to speak to. Did we not have a while ago an email that came through with a link that allowed you to look at which bits belong to yes. Highway and which bits belong to nobody and which bits we thought we owned and things like that? Yes. I'm sure we've had that. Yes, but it's how up to date that is. Yeah. 
earlier but I've got off <laughs> duty so I'm able to report them in person um, you know like yourselves um, had a good discussion with um, national highways about um, the proposed dueling of the M1 especially the track from um, Morpeth to, um, to Felton um, they came um, to County Hall and had a meeting with the County Councillors and you know I, I am aware that I had a meeting with yourselves too but the message seemed to be that um, you know that we're really going to um, do the consultation well on this occasion um, really trying to get as much information about the local situation as possible so that anything they did would have a sort of evidence base and would be well founded um, you know obviously at the meeting I came from two angles one obviously I'm very concerned about Felton and diversions of um, traffic down the main street past the pub and you know up West Thurston um, so 
you know, again, um, saying that, you know, they were saying it was going to be, you know, nighttime diversions. That's what we had recently. But to be perfectly honest, they caused as much nuisance because people are trying to get to sleep and you've got heavy traffic coming through. Um, so, you know, their, their message was they were going to try and um, divert as least as possible. But, you know, those diversions are still going to take place, both here in Felton and obviously um, where I'm from, up in Long Framington, along the A697. And, um, you know, th their message was, again, you know, we're contacting local parish councils. We're going to have good chats with them, talk through what we hope to do. Um, so, you know, I found it, you know, a really useful meeting, I did. Um, but again, there's a guy there um, that's public benefit. And, you know, I'm just, you know, thinking of your own village. Is there anything really that we could do with our little roads committee that maybe national highways could contribute to or chip into um, because of all the disruption we're going to have. And um, yeah, I just think it is a useful opportunity. We are, you know, getting all this hassle. You know, let's try and get a little bit of benefit out of it for Felton, especially, you know, contribution to, you know, one of our schemes, especially the one down Main Street. Um, if they could help us there. Um, so, yeah, good discussions with National Highways. Um, the other meeting that I've been having recently, um, which I have chatted to um, uh, Tony about, was that I had a meeting with the Sustainable Housing Officer. I don't know if you're aware of this. You know, I didn't give it a lot of credence, but um, there are garages um, around the county um, that um, the sustainable housing officer has an eye on as buildings that could be converted to old people's bungalows, uh, bungalows for the elderly. Um, again, you know, in a place like Felton, um, you know, there aren't alternative garages um, to offer people if, you know, they're thinking that these long strips of garages could be converted into two or three bungalows. Um, so, you know, I did listen at the meeting, but I didn't think it was really a starter for our village because there's no alternative parking and you know, we all know the problem is um, at the minute that there's a lot of parking on the street, never mind in the garages, because of how many cars everybody's got. But um, just so as you're aware, I don't know if she's been in contact with you yet, has she? No, the principal housing officer. But, you know, they are doing these sort of projects, and, you know, I can understand, you know, maybe on the edge of a small town where you've got a row of redundant garages. Um, it might be a useful way of, you know, reusing the village, uh, reusing the garages. But in a village like Felton, where you know eighty percent of them are being used anyway, um, there's not a lot of scope for um, for redevelopment there. And obviously, we've had the email recently from Ruben Morgan saying that um, our scheme. A part of our scheme has got a starting date, 16th December at Riverside. So that was quite welcome news. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, that's about all. Um, in the big picture, I've been looking at opening a quarry. It's four stones in uh, near Hayden Bridge, but I don't think that's going to have much impact on our local area. Thank you very much for that. Any questions you'd like to ask me? You did mention Trevor to me. Oh. I'll trigger your memory. Yes, up. come on. Southview. Yes, Southview, yes. You know, I am aware that um, 
council employees have been out measuring. Um, yes, that's maybe pertinent to bring in there on the back of you, Trevor. The working group did have a meeting with Peter Thompson, who was an engineer for Harvey's on design, etc., to do a feasibility study. Um, we met with Peter and it all, I mean, it looks positive. He obviously in due time will come back and um, tell us what his findings are. So yes, it's it's good that it's moving forward. We're making progress. Trevor, can I just ask the Riverside stuff starting this in sixteenth of December? Yeah. Will there be any sort of problems because on the twentieth of all the towers on the bridge? Will there be any sort of? I don't think that'll interfere with it at all. No, I will speak to Ruben Morgan. I'll say that the cows on the bridge are taking place on the twentieth. Yeah, just uh, this is what any sort of equipment that might be in the way for us. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think there'll be storage on the bridge. Yeah. Chair, I was wondering about this scheme as to how it will be progressed. What will they be doing first, second, third? Because personally, I think the parking areas on the bridge should be done first. Hmm. I think it's the yellow lines that are going to happen first. But. You know, I'm right with you, Tony. It's it's getting that marshalled parking rather than the free for all that we've got at the minute that will really help yes. sort out. Because you know, I know visiting Almouth, you know, it all used to be haphazard, and you know now there are bays which freeze up, you know, important areas that people need to move around in, um, and you can accommodate a lot more parked cars. Mm by giving everybody an allocated bay. Um, so, I'll be saying to Ruben that I've been to the parish, I know that you were wanting yeah, the no, yellow no, lines. No, 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 I think the bays are important yeah. because, yeah. So I will speak to Ruben and say, Will you let us, will you let us know? I will let you know. Thank you. May I ask a question? Just in terms of the Riverside parking, the Parish Council um, asked that yellow lines weren't put in front of the running fox. What was the outcome of that? They're not. They're not being put in front of the running fox. Thank you. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you. Thank you. All right, any more questions? Oh, no. Thank you. I'll be in touch with that. Gas, one with gas, I think it's Holthoff is the one without gas he wants to use. He wants to use Felton as his trial village for the one that does have gas. Um, so I put in, I forwarded the email onto our biodiversity group, so both uh, Richard Anne and Gemma have got that, but just to let the rest of you know, they are going to liaise directly with Matt and hopefully we can and we can get something together. His, his thought is you, in the past, these projects have gone out to a big company like Eon mm -hmm. uh, and They've obviously taken their cut and things like that. He wants to try and keep it as local as possible. He wants to try and do the things themselves and organise their own contracts. But he thinks by getting the local council involved, they'll have more buy-in from the local populace, which you know you have to sort of commend him for, and uh, hopefully that will work. So we'll wait and see what comes of that. That's just keep people informed of what's going on there. Um, anybody else any presentation? Yes. Uh, Richard and I attended a meeting which Trevor Thorne was, has mentioned about five years. And they were very keen to keep in touch with the parish council. That came through very clear. And uh, the hope would start initially on, in February 22, the initial works. Uh, if the breach has to be closed, there is a possibility, which Councillor Thorne referred to there, that some traffic would be flowing down the 6 and 7. 
I pushed for all heavy traffic to go to the six and seven, while the closure was on. David Lokes, the director of local services, was against it. Glenn Sanderson was supposed to be moved. He wasn't, so I didn't make an issue of it. I have told the council of thought about it. And I said, why not have it? To me, the easiest way would be to put the traffic, maybe some heavy, the northbound up the 697 and the southbound come down the A1. Then you don't have any congestion in the village. If there's a closure. As you said, hopefully the argument of the A's have been very good in the last couple of closures, even though there's no work going on. Oh, yes. So, okay, we'll see. Step this forward. is when they start construction. Yes. Uh, the, uh, apparently, there is a resident in the village, in first, first of West Lewiston, who is a, a tree and flora expert and is recognised nationally. Whoever that is, they wouldn't, they couldn't give me details. There will be a lot of planting to the southwest of the uh, new road, where, which I suppose that would be on the west side of the, uh, the A1, as far as I can tell. They didn't have any plans to show us, but definitely there will be a lot of trees planted too put back the trees about to put down, put the bridge in, put the extra road in, the extra couch in, and the trees which will be lost in the in the west. Uh, everything will be very climate friendly and carbon neutral. The funding project is pretty much great on on the uh, case and uh, the contractor for the bridge will be the same contractor who built the spear bridge at Sunderland. Okay. He says, they said that he was very, very good. But the traffic chap, I've got his name. Hang on. They said they would, um, so we probably need to trace them up. Yes, I think we do. <laughs> but the other thing which was I thought was very reassuring is that when they're doing the major work, they will have a lot of large teams of people working on a section of the road. So they're not going to have work going on all the way up. Right. Uh, which means the actual diversion, if there are any diversions through the village, they'll be very brief. Yeah. So, because I had visions of mm -hmm. heavy traffic coming to you for weeks on end, that will not happen. And they also agreed, uh, they were very keen to do it in um, an environmentally sensitive way. They'd done a lot of work on noise abatement, um, you know, right over to the village, and the way the bridge is designed and the cutting is designed and so on. And they said they would be more than happy to come and do some public events before and during the main construction phase that affects us, so that people can go along and look at the plans and see what progress they're making. So I think they were, you know, they wanted 
the village to be on their side and uh, go by a long way to make sure that happens. But it was, it was good. Yes. One of the comments was, of the cook was, the running fox would be very busy. <laughs> <laughs> I missed that one. Yeah, well, one, uh, one, one call with six men so they can come and yeah. call with them. <laughs> but I'm glad you managed to get to that. I might say I have some more apologies. Thank you. Anybody, anything else? Any other meetings? Want the Redfield meeting yeah. took place, took place. We've seen um, uh, the drainage system. Um, step forward, courtesy of, of blue blue. the contract blue it. <laughs> Finally found the junction between the two collector pipes on the east and the south side of the wreck. We now have a manhole over them, we can see what's happening, and at some point hopefully we can get them inspected and washed out. Um, Contracts for sorting out around the edge of the field are well, driven through by Claire, and the grand thing this morning the new swing went in. Well, don't go use it left on this. I put some sides up on it. Um, I found that because it was very clear from the installers how long we needed to leave, they had taped around it. So I spoke to the, the company and they said, keep it on for at least today, you know, and really, you know, as long as possible, but they weren't too concerned if it gets used tomorrow. So I'll see what it looks like tomorrow. It depends. I don't know how fast these, I didn't know if the weather would affect how long it was going to take. But it will, and it's going to be cold. Yeah. yeah. So we need a couple of days, I think. Yes. Yeah. Only fit for the weekend. <laughs> One thing that was interesting, they used a whole borer. Um, what? Uh, yay wide, and within minutes they were filling up from bottom up with water. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. but it's, uh, it is, I mean, it's telling them we've had the weather to prove that, haven't we? Because it's been yeah. very, very wet. But, yeah. but you can fact, see it flowing in. Quite high there. Because see, the land to the north is higher. Yeah. Looking straight down. And ball field straight down. Yeah. Straight down. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I knew when the land, when the field was out and out. 30, 40 years ago, at least 40 years ago, uh, we were virtually done with water. Um, I would also say uh, Lindsay's also installed the new bins, which arrived. Um, so that's been done by nice, Lindsay. And there's been ongoing working parties looking at the, the hedge and um, getting the back hedge and getting that ship shape. Okay. Cracking and barrel on the uh, register board outside of the shop. I think that it's it, it's good for looks for for uh, no, no, twenty years. See, see how that's all the it. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would suggest we put um, a simple thumb turn over the on the outside so that it can't be sucked open by a gust of getting. Yeah. If people are happy with that, I would do it. Yes, I think so. Um, was the backboard very wet? Well, I, to be honest, I haven't, I didn't, literally didn't touch it. Um, I don't think there's any secondary damage. It's not, the door's not a good weather seal anyway. No, it's not. Could the cropping then meet between the two? Are they having to be up between these? No, we didn't. No, we didn't. Uh, right. uh, I, I accept my apologies. I can stand. Was I think we did meet. Yes, we did. <laughs> yes, we did. Yes. Yeah, it was um, telling me something. Well, we're, going, well, we're planning uh, a walk around the village yes. and like what's happening. Oh, that's, uh, yeah. yeah. I would say, sorry, most it's going to sound like we just sort of like deferring things. Most of the things that were on our agenda, we deferred to, not deferred decisions, but deferred action until the spring because we've got a few projects that we need to do. There is the benches outside the village hall, um, the, the little paving slabs underneath, they need a, a, you know, a, a good clean. We're going to make them, because the hall is intending to do up the gardens for the Jubilee, yes. we're going to um, 
you know, do an effort at the same time, get those benches really looking nice. But again, something for the warmer weather, basically, because we'd like to sand them back or, you know, and, and re properly redo them. Um, so that's a sort of a spring project. There was the, um, we said really we should do, we're going to, we are going to do a walk around now to just check everything. I, mean, I know Greg, you and myself have also been yeah. out and looked at everything. But a walk around looking at all of the assets just in, in, in the light of storm damage. But we're also going to do, aim to do a proper walk around as a group, as a committee in the spring. Again, um, we felt that was the best time of year to, to do that and report back. Um, we are hoping to refer the, uh, the red phone box, and John's done quite a bit of research into various companies. Um, and we would like to do a fundraiser at sort of February time to, to, to support that. And you're going to do that. You can route in the bridge singers. Yes, I was we have a song all about it. Yes, I've already spoken to you. We thought we could maybe do a sort of, it sounds a bit cheesy, but almost like a Valentine's themed, yeah. you know, a February themed. Um, yeah. Fundraiser where we get the singers there and we sort of like you know it's the red box and it's the season of the or something. So that's the sort. Of, so again, we basically pushed that down. So we, it felt like we were saying we'll do this in the spring, we'll do this in the spring. But we have, you know, we're, we're starting to sort of tackle some of these issues. It's just a not an immediate project. To yeah. Chair, there was an email saying there's going to be a walk around on Saturday. Sorry, I was wasn't well. But we couldn't get a hold of you. Yeah. No, no email flying, and Greg and I do it now. <laughs> the, the only thing, that, like, as I said to you, is Claire and I did briefly speak, um, and we both done walk around ourselves, and there was remarkably, we got off remarkably lightly. If you go to Amble, the allotment, for example, are absolutely destroyed. And ours, we seem to have come off so lightly in comparison. Yes, yeah, yeah, I suppose. Does that other tree come down from our uh, uh, SEC line? Yes, but that, that's because it's entered and we've spoken to the officer, and so we've already closed the path off, so it's not an urgent issue for Look, I haven't said that, we don't need to do that, but I've heard tell of a house in Walkworth this morning, which has both the cable ends blown out, and it was a bone blue. Wow. Um, anything else for its client item 11? It's done the item 12. For some reason, I emailed her last week, and Katie, for the first time ever, has not got back to me. So I can only assume she's on leave or something. So I have nothing to report, I'm afraid. That's not like Katie. Uh, just might just be very busy. Yeah. Really sort of just check that out because I've got my emails updated, and it's still nothing there. So it's not like it's something very long. Okay. So uh, I'll chase her up again and then report to the next meeting. Item 13: correspondence received. Uh, to receive a list of the correspondence which you should have all received uh, on page 316. And if there are any comments, that's what we've received and the actions we've taken at the moment. Uh, item 14, just so people are aware, uh, some members of the public uh, commented that they, it used to be in the uh, minutes or on the agenda, what the council was looking at in terms of planning commissions. Uh, and at the moment, or it was passed a while ago, I think before I started, that as the responsible officer, all our um, comments go to Claire, and Claire submits our comments as the responsible officer. So that's been happening via email, as you all know. But the downside of that is the public are no longer aware necessarily of what's going on. Uh, and so I asked Claire to just put this in as uh, item uh, 14, a permit item, so just so the public can themselves look at what bits of planning are going on in the village, give them an idea. So for us, we should all know about it because we've received emails and we've corresponded. This is just to let the public know what's going on. And, and we've had another one in how we since I did this. Yes. Which is in, in, on the time round. Uh, that will obviously appear in the next meeting. In the next meeting. Uh, before we go, oh, oh yes, sorry, items for next agenda. Does anyone want to bring up any items for next agenda? Not for the moment. Uh, don't forget, if you do have any, please let Claire know uh, at least a week before the meeting, or just over a week before the session, but can please. Um, just a reminder, there's no meeting in January, so the date of the next ordinary meeting will be the 7th of February. Uh, in the British Hall again? We hope. <laughs> and then, part two, because we're going to be discussing uh, contracts, job descriptions, salaries, etc., with personal details, uh, I'm afraid we're going to have to 
seek a real, uh, pass a resolution to exclude public and press. So the resolution to exclude public and press, Felton Parish Council may resolve to pass a resolution under section 1, bracket 2 of the Public Bodies and Missions to Meetings Act 1960 to exclude public and press due to confidential nature of business to be discussed, which includes personal data. So all those in favour? Any against? One against? Um, so thank you very much.